Hello and welcome to Starting Line Church. My name is Alex Tabat and I'm one of the pastors here. And we are so excited that you are here with us today. And we just wanna let you know that you are loved and that you are welcomed. And again, that we are so excited to have you here. And here at Starting Line, we want you to embrace that there is more to life through Jesus Christ. And one of those ways that we have been doing to show you that there's more to life in Jesus Christ is through online communities. And this has just been a great way to connect with you during the craziness of this past season and these past couple of years. And we are so, so blessed to have technology to do that. And we are also so excited because actually today we are starting our in-person community gatherings right here, right now. We are so excited to really just let you in on this experience. And we know that you're watching it online, but just please pray for us as we are doing the in-person services and in-person communities right now. So please, please, please just be excited for us and pray for us. And if you can as well, bow your heads and pray for us as we begin this service. Dear God, as it says in your word, where two or three are gathered, you are also here. So we know that you are here with us. And Holy Spirit, we just pray that you continue to pour out your spirit here and just be with everyone watching um, and everyone in person today. That is just amazing opportunity that Starting Line has to reach the people of not only Cleveland area, but far beyond um, Ohio as well. So we just pray that you reach everyone that needs to be reached today, that Pastor Al has the words to speak, and that it just hits the hearts and souls, the minds of us today. So bless this time, bless this sermon, bless this worship, bless everything that Starting Line has to offer. In your name, amen. Your Father everlasting, the all-creating one, God Almighty. Through your Holy Spirit, conceiving Christ the Son, Jesus our Savior. I believe in God the Father, I believe in Christ the Son, I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. In our defender, suffered and crucified. Forgiveness is in you. Descended into darkness, you rose in glorious life. Forever seated high. I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit, our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection, that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. And I believe in you. And I believe you rose again. I believe in the virgin birth, I believe in the saints communion, and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection, when Jesus comes again, for I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in God our Father, 
I believe in Christ the Son. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Our God is three in one. I believe in the resurrection that we will rise again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. For I believe in the name of Jesus. That the highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, it's free indeed. Yeah, I'm a child. Yes, I am. Free at last, He has ransomed me. Oh, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, His free. child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am And I am chosen, not forsaken I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am Let's pray. Lord God, we rejoice in you this morning. We rejoice in the truth within these songs. We thank you that you created us out of love and kindness and generosity and that even in our sin and depravity and our um, choice to turn away from you, that you still made a plan for redemption for us. We thank you for that great truth that's just laced throughout these lyrics and these words. We ask that um, through your spirit in this time before us that we would know what it means to be your children, to know what it means to be um, following in you and being followers of Christ. We ask that um, the words in the sermon and the words in the scriptures would speak to us profoundly and deeply. We ask that our hearts would be open to you to hear what we need to hear in this time. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, hey there, Starting Line Church. My name is Al. I'm one of the pastors here, and we are really glad that you have joined us today. We're excited about today because we are starting a brand new series called Set Apart, where we're going to take a look at Christianity, what the church was formed on, and talk about the things that set it apart from all other religions. Because the reality is there are so many ways of belief in this world. In fact, that there are over 4,000 
thousand different religions out there. The definition of religion is the belief in and worship worship of a superhuman controlling power like God or gods. So that means there are 4,000 different ways that people think they should go about life in a spiritual sense. How do we know which one's true? How do we know that following Jesus truly is the way? Has anyone ever asked you that before? And maybe you didn't know how to answer, or maybe you've asked that question yourself. And of course, right, we know that faith is a big part of this, and, you know, what we've experienced and how we've experienced things firsthand is a part of this. But there are also things and topics and answers that we can talk about that sets Christianity apart from all others that I think is going to be really eye-opening for us over the next couple weeks. And my prayer for these, this series is that some of these questions that you have would be answered. And the truth of Jesus and who he is and what the Christian life is all about would come alive for you like never before. So you can walk confidently in what you believe. Today I want to start by telling you a story about one of my longtime friends named Amber. Amber and I met in 2007 through basketball, so about 14 years ago, and she's still one of my greatest friends. And what we still laugh about today is the first time Amber came to my house in middle school. It was around Christmas time, and my mom and I had this really good idea that we should build a gingerbread house when Amber was over. But the problem was, I don't think any of us had ever done one before, or have it in a while at least, and none of us in my family are artistic or creative when it comes to any of that stuff. So we ended up doing this, and we had a lot of fun, but this gingerbread house was awful. It was falling apart. It was terrible. We had no idea what we were doing. We for sure thought we scared Amber away and that she would never come back to my house ever, ever again. But Time and time again, she kept returning. And we built this this really cool friendship over the years. Not even a first impression failed gingerbread house could stop. When we graduated high school, we didn't see much of each other. I went to college in Indiana, and she went to college in North Carolina. But whenever we did reunite... And even when we still do, it's like no time passes because our relationship is consistent. It's not distant, even though physically it might be in distance. Have you ever had a relationship like that in life? It's really special when you do. And when I say the word relational, what do you think of? Relational, right? I'm referring to when people are directly involved in someone's everyday life. Life. It's consistency when things, even when it gets tough. It's nearness and closeness. You can't be relational with someone if you're distant from them or far away. Today, in the first week of our series called Set Apart, we're going to start with an idea that sets Christianity apart from all other religions. And it's this, that God is relational. God is relational. This means that God is near and God is present and God is close to each and every one of us. Now, you might be thinking, well, you can have a relationship with other gods, right, of other religions. But today, I want to show you how it's unique to Christianity, that God is relational in a specific type of way. We're going to start by reading in Genesis chapter 1, which is the first book of the Bible. We're going to start at verse 26. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. At the core of who God is and who God always has been is the fact that he is relational. Do you notice 
the beginning. Let us make mankind in our image. Why does God use us, right? Why doesn't he just use I? Well, we must note that the Christian faith stands upon the fact that we serve a God who is three in one, known as also the triune God. That means that we believe that there is one God, but made up of three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each person maintains a unique identity, yet infiltrates each other. And we see here in this passage in Genesis that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are all agents and present at the time of creation. From the very beginning, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit have existed in communion together. And we're seeing here that even in God's divine nature, he himself is a relational being. Three persons right, make up one God. It then goes on to say that God created humankind in his image and in his likeness. And we see that as really, really significant for us. Because he created humankind to rule the earth together. God didn't create humans because he needed to. He didn't create humans because he was lonely and <laughs> needed some friends. He, didn't, he wasn't bored when he was creating everything else in the universe. God created us in his image because at his core, he is relational. And because it's who he is, it's what he does. The entire creation story is documented in the book of Genesis, right? How, how God created the world and everything in it, the heavens and the earth, the light and the darkness, the waters and the land, the, the plants and the animals. And then there was the plan to create humankind. And we read in these specific verses that the process was a little different in creating humans than when he created all the other things. It says that we were created in the image of God, showing that we are valued in a different way above the other things that God created. The fact that we are made in the image and likeness of God means that we were created for a purpose, on purpose. Humankind was created to reflect the image of our creator, unlike anything else that was created. So we see this relational aspect of God when he creates male and female. So, so why does this set Christianity apart from all the others? What does this mean for us? What does this mean for our lives? What does this mean that God is relational? Why is it significant? It means that Christianity is both horizontal and vertical. Let me explain what I mean. When I say horizontal, I'm referring to the direction you go if you were to draw a line from side to side right? It's going this way. When I say vertical, I'm referring to the direction you would go if you were to draw a line from top to bottom, right? To the, to the ground, to the sky. It goes this way. It's up and down. Christianity is horizontal. Let's start with that first, meaning it's a relationship between me and the other people around me. So the horizontal relationship symbolizes the interactions and the friendships and the community we have with the individuals who are in our lives. God desires us to have these horizontal relationships with others. Later in, in Genesis, in chapter 2, starting at verse 18, God continues and goes on and says this, The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would, what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no helper was found. No suitable helper, helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and then closed up the place with flesh. We see that God's response to seeing Adam rule the earth by himself is that it's not good for him to do so. It's not good for him to be alone. That God himself finds it, need, he finds it appropriate to create another person for him, to create a helper suitable for him. Now, the word helper here doesn't imply that the woman is Adam's assistant or servant, right? But it's his equal in relationship. 
And the original language that the Bible was written, the Hebrew word for helper here is ezer. This word is used in this sense, right, talking about woman, but it's also found in other places in the Old Testament used for two different things. And those two different things are the powerful nation of Israel and God himself. It, this is like so important for us to see, right? Because we see here from the beginning of time, God was showing us that he is relational, that he created us to be relational too, not trying to gain power over one another, but working together, doing life together, being close with one another, walking through life with one another. We have been created to be relational beings who have deep and spiritual relationships with other people. And from the very beginning of time, we see a pattern repeated from the start. God expressing to people that he desires for us to have close and intimate and consistent relationships with other people. This is what God calls us to as followers of him. To have horizontal relationships with each other in our lives. As you know, I'm sure, life can be challenging and it has ups and downs and days can be really hard. And those things won't go away when we embrace relationships with one another, but it will make things go better. It will make days brighter. It will make situations more encouraging. We need other people running this race with us. You cannot do it alone. You should not do it alone. It's not good for you to be alone. In God's words, we are in this together. Christianity is a horizontal relationship between us and other people. That's what it's about. Maybe today you're realizing that you've isolated yourself because no one understands you. Maybe you've been hurt by others in life and you don't want to get close to anyone again. Maybe you're introverted and shy and you think you don't need anyone to go through this life with. How are you going to embrace the horizontal relationships in your life this week? It might be asking someone to grab a meal or go for a walk. It might be calling someone you haven't talked to in a really long time. It might be making a new friend might be talking to the neighbor you've been ignoring because you don't want to talk to them. Take a step towards deepening relationships with other people this week. So we see that Christianity is about a horizontal relationship, but it's also vertical. Christianity is vertical, meaning it's between me and God. So a vertical relationship symbolizes the interaction and relationship we have with Jesus Christ right, in our personal lives. To understand this better, we're going to be in the book of John, and we're going to read John from John chapter 1, starting at verse 14. It says this, The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We've seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified concerning him. He cried out, saying, This is the one. I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the only one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the father has made himself known. The word became flesh is referring to God becoming human. When Jesus fully took on flesh in human form without ceasing to be God all at the same time, this God that we talk about as Christians is not one who separated himself from the human race in all his glory and power, but one who stepped down to earth to become one with us. This God that we talk about is not distant or far away, but he is near and close and wants to walk with you through this life. Jesus being fully human, all while not giving up his God nature, made himself known and accessible to us. Have you ever been like comforted by someone who's gone through the same thing you've gone through? 
any love and comfort is amazing when going through a hard time, right? But but it hits differently when you know that the person that the person knows what you're going through on a personal level. And depending on the situation, sometimes it's hard to feel comforted by those who've never experienced anything remotely like we have, right? But that's what's different and unique about Christianity. Our God is relational. We know that, and in that, has experienced what we have because of Jesus. And even though he's powerful and the creator of everything, he still saw it as important to walk among us and understand our pain and go through what humans go through and suffer like we do. Even in his glory, right, he calls us sister and brother and friend and wants a relationship and a friendship with you and me who are broken people. Far from perfect. Therefore, Christianity is a vertical relationship between us and God. Maybe today you realize that you need to take steps in this relationship with Jesus. Maybe you need to get more involved. Maybe you need to take a step to go deeper in your faith. Maybe you need to get baptized or be more consistent with studying the Bible or going to church. Maybe you haven't committed your life to Jesus, but you want to step into that vertical relationship with him. If any of that is you and you don't know where to go, please talk to us and reach out to us. Because the reality is, There's probably been a time in each of our lives where we felt alone and isolated and distanced from community and friendships. The reality is the world sometimes makes us feel like that and that our spiritual enemy, Satan, wants us to feel that way. Because if God is relational, he wants to be the opposite of it. But I know that God wants so much more for you than that kind of life. How do you need to embrace these relationships in your life to embrace all that God has for you? Because you will find that when we do that, we will see that what sets this Christianity, this Christian religion apart is that God himself is relational. He consists of that. That is his being. And he stepped down to earth to continue that, to be in relationship with us. And that makes a huge difference in the way we live our lives. You just heard what makes Christianity different than all other religions in this world. It's not just a religion, but there's relationship to this religion, both horizontally and vertically, both with God, but with others as well. And that is who, in a sense, we are as Christians is we are relational because God has made us relational to be in relationship with others and with him. So this week, as we are continuing on with life, as we are continuing on with this journey in this world, remember this and act on it as Pastor Al has said of what you need to do this week is maybe you need to reach out to your neighbor that you don't really know because she's kind of creepy and she's a cat lady probably. Or maybe you need to reach out to a coworker or maybe you need to reach out to a family member. And all of these are great, but just please think and pray about where God is calling you, where the Holy Spirit is calling you to reach and who he's calling you to reach this week. So as we finish out Pastor Al's sermon, will you bow your head and pray with me? God, we are so thankful that you are not some distant thing, that you are close and near to us, that as we saw and heard in Genesis, that you literally created us and formed us to be like you, and you formed us to be relational. So I pray that everyone listening to this sermon today, throughout this week, whatever, that they are able to find people to be relational if they haven't already. And God, I just pray that they're able to spread your name throughout their communities, throughout their world that they live in and reach those that 
are lost. We pray for strength, we pray for protection. Um, we know that the enemy loves to just make you feel like you're isolated and alone and help us to remember that we are not real alone because we have a relational God, we have you. We love you and help us to love you each and every moment we can and help us to follow you each and every moment that we can. In your name, amen. Thank you so much for listening today. And we just hope that, again, that you remember that we love you and that God has and wants a relationship with you. Now, please wait for five minutes because we have Starting Line Kids and our online communities starting in five minutes. Thank you so much and we hope to see you next week. Isn't this beautiful? It is. Okay, should it go here? Or here? Or here? Or here? Here, trade me. Okay, okay. Alrighty. Let's see here. I think the perfect place for this would be right there. Oh, I love it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you guys, she's not gonna like all this fanfare. Fanfare? <laughs> it's just some balloons and a banner. <laughs> I want to try. <laughs> this is Ray's triumphant return. Hooray! Hooray! That's hilarious. <laughs> okay, guys. We have to show Ray how much we love her. Yeah. With, without Ray's leadership, this place almost fell apart. I'd be so sad if we ever lost Ray again. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> Life without Ray is no fun. Yeah. What's going on in here, guys? Hey, hey Ray! Ray. Welcome, Welcome back! Aw, oh, thank you guys. You guys are so sweet. Do you like his balloons? Love them. They are pretty. <laughs>Was it hard being away from Connect HQ? Of course it was. But when times got rough, I said one of my favorite verses. It comes from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verse 34. I said it like this. You want to repeat after me? <laughs> yes. Okay. Mark 8, 34. Mark 8, 34. If any of you wants to be my follower, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. You must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up your cross and follow me. Wow, 
cross, that sounds heavy. For Jesus, the cross was the sacrifice that he made for us. In this verse, he's telling us to follow him, and we must make our own sacrifices for him every day. So, we have to give up things we love for something we love even more. Well, I hate to break up the party, but we've got an incoming message. Uh, it looks like it's coming from our field office in Orlando. Hey, HQ. Greetings from sunny Orlando. I heard that Captain Ray is headed back to HQ. That's wonderful news. It's a beautiful day here, and I have a friend named Mary who has a big question for you. Every day at lunch, I say a prayer before I eat, and sometimes I read my Bible. Lately, kids have been making fun of me. As long as I keep praying and reading my Bible at home, can I stop doing it at lunch? Or at least not on the days when I know they're watching me. I don't want to be teased anymore. We would love your help with this big question. Thanks, Connect HQ. I like her sunglasses. I hate to hear about when people are teased for what they believe in. Yeah, that reminds me of Paul from the Bible. Because of his belief in Jesus, he was faced with threats, beatings, and was even put into jail. Yeah, Paul talked about running the race for the prize no matter what. A prize? Yeah, there's probably something in there that we can use for the Bible link. Mike, why don't you and Alyssa search Paul's letters in the Bible app? We've got to come up with some strong links to help encourage Mary to keep running strong. Got it, Captain. Yeah, I'll look for a point link. Oh, um, by the way, this came to you from the Connect board. How nice. I'm sure they're glad to have you back. Wow. What is it? The board was so impressed with how I handle my suspension that they want to offer me a promotion. Well, that's great. But you, you just got back. I'd be the head of all the field offices. It'd be much less work, but much more travel. Well, you have said how you wish you had more time to travel and to spend time with family. This could be a good fit for you. Should I take it? I mean, what would you do? Well, I love my daily routine here, so I'd probably stay. But that's just me. When do you have to let them know? By tomorrow. Okay. That's weird. Wah, wah, all right. Okay, we're gonna start with the basic stretch to warm up the outtoids and you know, the quadcopters. Those are not muscles in the body, Mike. Sure they are. Aren't you gonna do this with me? No. I'm looking for a Bible link and you should be helping me. But Ray said we're gonna be running a race for a prize and I really want that prize. And if you don't warm up, you're more likely going to pull a hamster string or a tripods. Nope, still not muscles in the body. Agree to disagree. What do you think the prize is gonna be? A bouncy balls. Uh, I think it's gonna be bigger than that. <gasps> a bouncy castle. I think it's gonna be even bigger than that. Here, check out this Bible story I found. This is a 66 pick mixed up into one. The book's about God, who he is and what he's done. It's the Holy Bible, y'all, with God's truth packed out inside. It's alive, a prize to hide in your heart and in your mind. Old Testaments are set up for the big event. When Jesus crashed the scene with a new arrangement. It's history, his story, whose story, God's story. Let him know up all the pages that this show gone on. Let his word explode from this video into your life. I could live my life for a lot of other reasons. I could aim for a lot of different goals. I could do a lot of other things with my time and energy, but I've made a choice. I want to win. This life, it isn't mine at all. I'm giving it up. I'm trading it in. My energy, my time, my strength, it's not mine anymore. I've made a decision. 
This race is my life. Everyone else may choose to spend their time doing all kinds of other things. Watching TV, playing video games, shopping for the latest stuff, collecting the latest toys and trinkets, and then there's the whole endless online world. But not me. I used to spend time on those things, but now I consider that to be all a big waste. Those are just distractions to me now. That's time I'd rather spend becoming one with him. I've got to be disciplined. I've got to focus. I must have purpose in every step. I'm the boss of my body. I have to make it do what it should. I've got to play by the rules. I don't want to be disqualified. This isn't just practice. I want to win. I won't complain about it. I won't take time to argue with haters or listen to critics. I know I'm different from everyone else. But that's just what makes me shine. So I'm just going to get out there every single day and do what I need to do to win. Because I know that on that day, I won't let anything hold me back from reaching the goal. I'm taking off anything weighing me down. I'm getting rid of anything that slows me down. My hands may get tired, my knees may feel weak, but I feel stronger every day because I keep my eyes focused straight ahead. I've got something to look forward to at the finish line. I'm going to be proud of the choices I made, that it wasn't all for nothing, that all that hard work paid off, that everything I poured my life out for prepared me for this. At the end of this race, the ultimate prize is waiting for me. I'll meet Jesus face to face. That was a great race. Well done, son. Welcome home. So the race is our life and the prize is Jesus. Exactly. It takes courage to follow Jesus and live for him. Mary doesn't want to be teased for praying in school, but that's part of her race for the prize. Hmm. So every day we need to focus on Jesus and run towards him, no matter what we have to sacrifice. Nothing can stop us, even if we pull our trapezius muscle. Mike, that's not, wait, that actually is a muscle. Oh, really? Huh. The Bible link is, Running to win the prize. Bible link acquired. All right. I got to go run and tell everybody what we found. Whoa! Oh, I forgot to stretch my carpet tunnel muscles. Stand down. Hey, Ray, we found the Bible link. Running towards the prize. I think it's going to help Mary with her problem, but it made Mike a little obsessed with running. <laughs> I really miss that goofball. Ah! Hey, would you like to see some pictures that I took with my family when I went to visit them? Yes, let me see. Okay. So this one is of me and my twin sister on a Ferris wheel. And this one is of me and my cousin at the beach. Oh, and this one is of me and my nephew playing soccer. Aww. Looks like you had a lot of fun. I did. I got to talk with them a lot and love on them in person. I can tell you miss them. I do. And the Connect Board, they offered me a promotion. It'd be a lot of travel, but I get to see my family a lot more often. So you wouldn't be here anymore? No. Oh. But I don't want the promotion. I want to be the captain of Connect HQ with my family here. And I believe that that's where God wants me to be as well. But it is hard to sacrifice the chance to see my family. Ray, did I ever tell you that before I worked at Connect, I lived in my dream house? I don't think so. It had all these rooms and a pool and a little reading nook, and it had big closets for all my beautiful clothes and lots of space that I could invite my friends over to stay the night. But I gave that up whenever I decided to work at Connect. Do you miss it? Sometimes. But I gave up something I loved for something that I love even more. I know a house is nothing like your family, but it still took courage for me to let those things go. And every day, whether it's hard or easy, God gives me courage to live for Jesus. God gives me courage to live for Jesus. I'm so glad you're back, Ray. I know you'll make the best choice. Oh, oh, this place is so much bigger than I initially anticipated. Oh, oh.
Uh-uh. No. No running in the HQ. That is a safety violation 834. <sighs> Sorry. But I appreciate your interest in fitness. And no rule says that you cannot run into place like this. That increases circulation, promotes heart health. Okay. Ooh, 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 yeah. Oh, another both running. Okay, guys, mm. are you ready to complete our connection? Uh, yeah, I've got the Bible link. Running for the prize. Bible link uploaded. And I think I found the perfect verse link. The verse is from Mark 8, 34. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. First link uploaded. And I've got the point link. God gives me courage to live for Jesus. Point link uploaded. And I have an announcement to make. As of tomorrow, I will be staying here at Connect HQ as your captain. <laughs> That's great news! <laughs> Making a sacrifice to work here at Connect HQ is never easy, but every sacrifice that we make leads us closer to serving God 100% and living for Jesus only. Live it link uploaded. Connection complete. As your captain, I will rely on God for his strength because he gives us the courage to face our fears, to stand up for what we believe in, to pray powerful prayers, and to never give up. And every day at Connect HQ, he gives us the courage to live our lives completely for him. And it's an honor to work alongside each and every one of you. It's great to have you back, Captain. Ditto. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some training to do. Running for the prize. <laughs> and if you'll excuse me, I have some safety violations to attend to. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm sorry you won't be traveling as much. It's okay. I'll take vacation to spend time with my family. I'm glad you're staying. Me too. <laughs> okay, so I think it's time we clean all of this up. You got it, Captain. We got an answer back from HQ. Watch this. Hi, Mary. I'm Ray, and I'm the captain of Connect HQ. We found an answer for you. The Bible tells us this in the book of Mark. Mark 8:34. If any of you wants to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross and follow me. That's one of my favorite verses because it reminds me to keep my eyes on Jesus alone and to take on the path that God has prepared for me. Each of us has a race to run. It requires sacrifice, avoiding distractions, and daily training. But the prize we run toward is Jesus, and every sacrifice brings us closer to a fuller life with Him. Giving up the things we love and living for God only takes courage. It's never easy, and it happens every day. But we trust God, and we rely on Him for His strength. In your own race for the prize, don't let teasing stop you from praying or reading your Bible at lunch. When you feel like you can't press through, remember this. God gives me courage to live for Jesus. So keep praying, keep running. Trust that God is with you. Mary, thanks for the question. And remember, Connect HQ is here to help you. I'll keep praying no matter what people say. Thanks, Connect HQ. dance to worship God? Because I get a chance to show the world how awesome He is. He gives me everything I need. He loves me. He listens to me sing. He watches me dance to Him. I can't think of any better reason to give God my whole focus. I worship Him with everything I am. Get up on your feet and let's connect to God together.
says I am. I am who God says, who God says I am. Let's go. I am who God says, who God says I am. I am who God says, who God says I am. I am who God says, who God says I am. I am who God says, who God says I am.
you wanna save you And I know that you're always gonna be there 